the last time you and I spoke, you were off to the coast of New Guinea. You were going to search for this quote unquote space trash, which you thought might have been left here like a billion plus years ago, perhaps by space aliens um, from our galaxy, another galaxy. Did you find anything? Well, I was uh, worried that we might not find anything, but we did. Actually, we found the molten droplets from the surface of this uh, meteorite, this object that collided with Earth back on January 8th, 2014, almost a decade ago. And uh, it was moving very fast, uh, so fast that it was unbound to the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, and it came from outside the solar system. The US Space Command confirmed it at the 99.999% confidence. We calculated that it was moving faster than 95% of all stars near the sun. So it was moving really fast, may have benefited from artificial mm -hmm. propulsion. But moreover, it had material strength tougher than all the space rocks that NASA cataloged over the past decade. So that raised the possibility maybe it was technologically produced, manufactured. Uh, mm -hmm. And we went there to find out. And the amazing thing is we found these molten droplets from the object when it was exposed to the immense heat from the fireball that was generated around it as it moved through air. And um, they, we put them, uh, we scraped them off a sled that was covered by magnets that we pulled over the ocean floor, two kilometers deep, about uh, a little more than a mile. So it's a very deep uh, ocean over there. And we managed to find these particles, these droplets that are less than a millimeter in size, less than the head of a pin and uh, mm -hmm. weighing a milligram. Just to show you, this is uh, one of the vials that I received by FedEx from the expedition delivered to my doorstep. Mm -hmm. And of course it took FedEx uh, a few days to bring it. And Wait, I realized- Can you see that one more time? <laughs> well, what you see is mostly uh, volcanic ash, basically black powder mm -hmm. that was the most abundant constituent uh, attracted to our magnets. But when we uh, filtered it out using a mesh, uh, we uh, removed all the tiny particles from volcanic activity. We were left with bigger particles, uh, roughly a quarter of a millimeter in size or bigger. And when we look at them through a microscope, we saw these beautiful metallic marbles. My daughter asked if I can give one to her so that she can put it on a necklace. I said, it's smaller than the head of a pin. You can't really thread them. Uh, and uh, these are, quite beautiful to see because they're mm -hmm. uh, spherical. They're just like marbles. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are the leftover material from this meteorite. We found it mostly along the path, the expected path of this object. And now we are analyzing them. And we hope to tell that whether the material is different than solar system material, we can date it using radioactive isotopes, clocks that date the material. Mm -hmm. And we can also look for rare elements at a much higher concentration. If, for example, it was like Voyager, a spacecraft that would appear as a meteor by colliding with another planet, the composition would be quite unusual and wow. the, the droplets would contain some rare elements. Just imagine computer screens, semiconductors melted. Wow. Um, so what does it tell you? I mean, is it just stuff that formed in the ocean or formed um, on the actual rock? Or is it actually alien? In well, that's the key question. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have the materials. That's good news. Uh, mm -hmm. I was worried that we might not find anything. It was very, um, dif a very difficult, challenging task uh, because we're talking about millimeter scale droplets across mm -hmm. a region that is 10 kilometers in size, the size of Boston. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, going with a sled that is roughly a meter in width. And we did 26 lines back and forth, crisscrossing that region. Mm -hmm. We knew roughly where the meteor path is, but mm -hmm. it was very challenging and we recovered it. So now we found the, the spherules primarily along the meteor path. So we also compared it to other regions far away. And uh, now the next task is uh, studying them and figuring out what they're made of and whether the, the object was technological in origin. And, you know, we should have an answer, hopefully, within a, a month or so after we go through the uh, rigorous analysis. Mm -hmm. And we do it in three laboratories, one at UC Berkeley, another one at Harvard, and the third one at the Brucker Corporation in Berlin, uh, Germany. 
Well, we'll have to have you back in a few weeks to discuss those findings. In the meantime, since you've been gone, there's been a lot of um, emphasis and focus on the the whole possibility that there is something else out there, including from Congress. We're now seeing a, a real bipartisan effort. Marco Rubio has been vocal about this. Senator Chuck Schumer has been vocal about this. They want some hearings. They're scheduling hearings to find out more information how how do you view that? I mean, I, I know you, you've been in this field a long time and sometimes it's kind of poo-pooed and people kind of roll their eyes and there's all these science fiction movies about aliens, but this is something that you treat pretty seriously. Are you pleased that Congress seems to want to have more information? Definitely. Uh, first of all, it normalizes the discussion. You know, we need to behave as adults. If there is a neighbor in our uh, cosmic street. We we want to know about it. I mean, the public wants to know about it. Now the government wants to know about it. And uh, so let's uh, find out the facts. And the question is, the fundamental question is, is there fire behind this smoke? Okay, so there are people talking about it. Uh, Grush was saying the government is in possession of materials from a crash site. Uh, and we don't know whether that's real or not, because he didn't actually see those materials he just heard people talk about them and saw reports about them so we want to know that because anything interstellar has nothing to do with national security it's not the preview of the u.s president to know about it more than anyone else it should be knowledge that is shared by all humans so we want to know and um obviously congress will go in that direction and i'm very curious to see if they have materials and if they do i would be delighted to apply the same instruments that we are using for the meteor uh, meteorite uh, sample that we have to apply them to their materials we can immediately tell if the materials are from outside of the solar system because they would have a different age a different isotope ratios uh, and things like that so it's only for the government to come forward and say okay this is this is what we retrieved we want scientists to figure it out uh, I would be very pleased to be engaged in such a study. Uh, the question is, do they have those materials and do they have some knowledge that we haven't heard about? So you're in this field. You are sort of the the guy in this field. The government's never come to you, though, and said, Professor Loeb, we need your help. Can you help us analyze this? No, they didn't. So you can interpret that in two ways. One, that uh, they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. or that they do have it and it's behind the veil of national security for some reason, bureaucratic mm -hmm. reason. Uh, if it's the latter, let's break down this uh, mold and open it up for scientific inquiry because this is knowledge that should be shared by all humans. You know, we want to know if we have a neighbor. Uh, one way to find out what happens in our street is to look for objects that arrive to our backyard from the street. That's an obvious thing. You check your backyard and often you see the rocks that were there in the context of the solar system. These are asteroids and comets that we are familiar with. But every now and then you might see a tennis ball that was thrown by a neighbor. Hey everyone, Trish Regan here. If you enjoyed that clip, please do me the favor of subscribing to the channel. Just hit that little subscribe button right over there. Did I do that right? Uh, not quite, but you know where it is. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you get the alerts, and I'll see you back on the show.